family, and welcome back to the Ebony Odyssey. My name is Jermaine Golong, and I am a servant of the Most High God. Before we begin our journey today, I need you guys to give me the HBO special. And what is the HBO special? The Help a Believer Out special. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, for those who are watching on TV, please hit the up arrow on your remote control. Click on the logo. This will allow you to go down and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Once subscribed, hit the back button and you'll see the like button to the right. Please take your second, do this for me, uh, and then we can get right up into it. All right? You done? Great. I really appreciate you guys coming along. And as always, enjoy the journey. Let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is family trouble in Africa. And my support scripture for this is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. And scripture reads, Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Now, in this verse, um, you have Paul. He's heading back uh, to one of the churches that he has went to, one of the brothers that he has encouraged or, you know, wherever Paul has journeyed uh, throughout his path. You know, he continues to go back and strengthen and reinforce uh, that which was taught. Um, and, and so with this verse, as I continue to uh, let it just sink in this morning, you know, for us, um, and the title of the thing is uh, Family Trouble in Africa. We continue as parents trying to encourage our children, going back and forth with them over and over again trying to make them understand the importance of the things that we're teaching them, the importance of uh, the instructions that we're giving them. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't hit home. And so we keep going, continuing back and forth and back and forth uh, until that day that we finally pass away and our children are left to fend for themselves. Right. Uh, and so I want to jump right back into the scripture just a little bit more. Uh, it says, I am ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you. Now, many of us may have not grown up in the uh, pristine environment or the uh, family of abundance. Right. Uh, and, and so many times once our family members come back to us, it's usually for something. You know, it's it's rare it's very rare that you get family members that call you uh, just to say hi, you know, or this is just my family or, or maybe it's just the people I know. Uh, every now and then I get a couple of calls just to say hi. But uh, most of the time it would be me reaching out or something of that nature. Uh, so it's either you're not going to get a call to say hi or when you do get a call, you're going to get a call because it's a need. It's a dire need. And because you are family, we are always obligated to help. So, you know, that, that's usually the thought. Uh, but Paul is saying here, uh, I'm hoping this is Paul. It would not be burdensome for you. For I see not yours, but you. And when you love people in a certain way. I remember, you know, me joining the army. Um, it was a hard thing for me. It's like, man, I'm going to, you know, leave my grandmother who has raised me. But, you know, she said, go ahead and go. Go ahead and go make something out of your life. And, you know, that's just what I plan to do. But I would always call her uh, just to just to say hi, just to check in, just to let her know that I'm doing all right. Uh, I would call my mom. Uh, I think I would call my dad, too, at the time. Uh, but, you know, men, we, we process things differently. Uh, and mothers need that, that constant attention and constant love. So 
I would always call my grandmother and make sure I checked in. Uh, you know, it, I would I would call pretty much every week, every week. Uh, and then as time went on, you know, maybe every two weeks. But, you know, I always made sure that I checked in just so she know, you know. And, and that's just like the scripture saying, uh, you know, I don't want to be burdensome to her. But, you know, your children are never burdensome. You know, so as we love our children, you know, and I was raised by my grandmother, so it's pretty much like I was an additional child added on. But it's not anything that I'm seeking from her. It is just her that I'm checking on, you know, and that's what, you know, I, I know that's the biggest part missing from family nowadays. Nobody's checking on anybody. Only time people are checking to see if you're gone, so it may be some things that they can get. I hate to say that, but you know how it is. And if I'm not going to be honest with you, I shouldn't even be talking to you, right? But at the end of the day, you know, sometimes this is the, the main problem that we have, that we run into, that nobody is checking on you. They're just checking to see what they can gain from you. You know, sometimes it'll come across as how selfish is it of you to leave America when we need you for this would be something that you'll have to, you know, imagine that people would say to you if you were to leave them. What do they need you for? Look at the people that are around you. Look at, you know, the people, your friends, uh, the ones you hold close, uh, what do they need from you as opposed to what do they provide to you, right? Um, and it, it's nothing personal. It's nothing big. It's just evaluating the role that you play in people's lives and the role that they play in your life. You know, it's hard to you know, carry the weight of the world as you, you you always would see that man with the world on his back. Um, and he's trying to carry it. You know, retiring, coming here, unplugging from the system uh, that I had been in, you know, the effort that I tried to expend to get people to come together um, and the effort that I expend to keep my family together and the effort that I expended, you know, to make sure that people was good. You know, I have all of that effort right now. I have all that energy back that I was putting out. And, you know, it's, you could say it's a bad thing, but at the same time, it's, it's good for your health. It's good for your health to know that, hey, get you your own peace of mind. You know, you have to take care of some things because you have a family, too. And sometimes we stretch ourselves too thin trying to take care of people outside the immediate family. Um, and and that's when you run into family trouble. Um, you know, and it says it goes on to say. Uh, for the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will verily gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Um, and I'll continue to go on. It's, it's kind of like gifts, you know. I remember um, being young and giving gifts at Christmas. Uh, and it didn't matter who, like for the people who, who knew me, I always tried to get somebody something. Like we would have maybe 60 presents up under the tree because I've saved $60 and I went to the dollar store and I made sure that I got everybody a little something that was in the neighborhood and I would wrap it up and I would give it to them. This is verifiable, people. Anybody who knows me knows what time it is uh, because that was the whole purpose. It wasn't the purpose of having a full tree. It was the purpose of making sure that everybody felt loved during that time period for me, that nobody was left out, that everybody received just a little something, right? But as that time went on and I moved away and it was less people in the community that I had to care for, 
And then it was only uh, us four. Well, us three. My two boys and my wife. Right? And so at that time, I don't have to buy 100 gifts or 60 gifts for 60 uh, people. So I'm buying 60 gifts for three people. Right? So think about that. Think about this. The more abundantly I give, the less it will matter for the gifts received. All right? If you only had one gift you were given, you would treasure that gift because you have one. But now when our kids have more gifts or our spouses have more gifts or we have more gifts, we're just trying to open up the next one. We just trying to open up the next one. It didn't matter because whatever we got five seconds ago, we are trying to open up the next one. And so we love it even less now because we have it in abundance. You know, I talked to my sister uh, here recently and, you know, it's a crazy thing because uh, she doesn't realize the time difference or she always gets it messed up. And so I'm getting called like maybe three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, sometime around there. And it's a blessing. Uh, It's a blessing. But, you know, she tells me about, you know, the abundance of things that she's getting that's not being cared for. And I'm sorry about the plane. I know you guys will hear that in the background. But the abundance of things that she continues to buy her daughters and sometimes the less they care about it. And, you know, it's always about the next thing she's purchased or the next thing she's bought. And I love her to death, but it's like, don't none of that matter. Don't none of it matter. Because at the end of the day, you know, nothing is more valuable than just being around each other, than just the time being spent. Sure, it's nice to have gifts. It's great to have good things. But the more things we end up buying, the less things uh, that people appreciate. And I'm going to get into this topic, man. This is a long one. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm on one this morning and uh, I've been up early. And, and so, you know, we as men, uh, and this shouts out to all the, the men out here who, who put in the work every day to get to the next stage in life. Uh, I love my brothers out there. You know, I, I've had conversations all week uh, talking to some brothers back home. So it's very good to have these conversations and, and go over these things and me tell them how important they are and uh, how important the journey has been to, you know, think about those guys and encourage those guys and those guys say they're encouraged by me. Uh, but me and we go and we put in a lot of effort. And people don't understand how much effort men put in. And, you know, just me being here, you know, I have to tell my wife and uh, talk to the boys and, you know, let them know, you know, hey, dad's dad gets tired, too, sometimes. You know, uh, most of the times my day I'm up at six. Uh, Sometimes I go to the market early in the morning uh, because guess what? If you don't go to the market over here. If you don't already have it, you're not eating. So it's very important to get up and get to the market. Even though we can walk right outside of our door, grab all the fresh fruits and vegetables that we need. If you wanted meat or you wanted something. And right now we don't live uh, in where our house is being built because the beach is right there. It's always fresh fish there. You have to go to the market. And if you don't go to the market, guess what? You don't have food. So you got to get up. You got to go. On top of that, you know, hey, you you start things. You have to see them through. You know, no business is going to be successful unless you go out and put the work in. You go out and you make sure people are where they're supposed to be. And you make sure uh, things are getting done the way they're supposed to be done. You know, that's here in Africa. And guess what? We still have businesses and stuff that we have to take care of in America. So sometimes you got to get on the phone and you're waiting for people to get up and your day is late and you're trying to take care of that. Oh, and then you need gas. Now now you need to repair something. You know, it's tons of things that you have to go through throughout the day and the effort that's required. You know, it's substantial. 
But, you know, it, it, it's not without its rewards. You know, how much how much effort did God put in creating the whole entire world? For us to throw trash on the street. How much effort did he put into creating the body itself for us to disrespect it and disregard its its natural use and purpose? The more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Man, that's a powerful scripture right there. And that's why I say family trouble in Africa. You have a whole lot of things going on in this world. Uh, You have things going on back home. You have things going on here. As things come up all the time, you're having trouble. And most people are not seeking you out to make your life easy. They need something from you. Times are getting tougher. Money's getting tighter. Days seem increasingly shorter. You cannot get things done as you once could. You cannot to meet, make the ends meet as they once were. Family trouble happens not only here in Africa, but in America. And we all need to be mindful of how we reach out, how we speak to, how we encourage one another going forward in these days ahead. Because it doesn't look like it's going to be pretty. It definitely looks like the road is going to be rocky. And we won't be able to help everyone. But we can always love on one another as much as possible during that time period of grief, mourning, and sadness. But family, I appreciate you for coming along. And as always, enjoy the journey.